Okay, so we've got our falling platform, we've got our moving platform, now we're gonna make a disappearing platform. So I'm just gonna take our falling platform, or actually I'll grab our moving one, and copy it, and then move it over to here. And then we'll move it down. Great. Now we're gonna get rid of the moving along path controller script. And we're just going to rename it to um, disappearing platform. Then we're going to give it a script called disappearing platform. And then we'll load it in Visual Studio. Okay, so this shouldn't be very hard. We're going to create a public float time to toggle platform. We're gonna set it equal to like two. That's gonna be how many seconds it takes for the platform to disappear and then reappear. Um, and then we're gonna have public float current time equal to zero and then public bool enabled. And it's going to be enabled as soon as we load the game. So then we're going to do current in our so then in our update function we're going to do current time plus equals time dot delta time and then if current time is greater than or equal to time the toggle platform then set current time back to zero and we're going to call a function called toggle platform. Oops. Then we'll have void toggle platform. Now you might be wondering too, how come sometimes we have public and how come sometimes we don't? Well, basically public makes it so that other scripts can access it and we can see things in the inspector. So a public variable allows us to change a variable in the inspector and it can be grabbed by other scripts. If it's private or if it doesn't have public, which means it's automatically private, um, no other script can access this toggle platform function function. So that's all that means You only want things to be public if you need other scripts to access them So now we have a little bit of an interesting issue um, You might think we can just set like our game object for example to be inactive um, But the problem is is if our game object is inactive Then it will stop running all scripts attached to the game object which means once the platform disappears, it will stop running the timer and it will never reappear. So basically what we need to do is have our parent object have the script that controls the platform, but then our parent object can't disappear. All of the, its children have to disappear. So luckily we already have like a sprite renderer and all that stuff as children. So because we've set it up this way, we can loop through all of our children and turn them off instead of having our entire object off. And this will allow the script to keep running. So to do this, we're just going to type in enabled equals not enabled. So if enabled was true, it's now false. If it was false, now it's true. And we're going to say for each transform child in game object dot transform. So for each child in our game object, we're going to say child dot game object dot set active to be enabled. Now if we reload Unity and then we'll bring our player over here over to the right a little bit so that we can see it easier. So now let's load this up and see if our platform disappears. Okay, awesome. So there is one bit of a problem though. If we jump on our player, our player now becomes a child of the platform. So it disables the player as well, which it's not supposed to do. We don't want to disable the player. So luckily, what we can do is go back to our code and say, if child.tag does not equal player, then we'll disable them. Okay, so now we'll test to make sure that this platform is disappearing. And it seems to be good. However, um, you'll notice the player disappears too. And that's because when we cloned the moving platform, we forgot to change the ground 
tag back to ground. Or I guess it might have been untagged for whatever the other ones are. Yeah, they're untagged. So make sure you change that because if it's moving platform, our player will become a child. We should just fall through the ground though. Okay. So now we want to make it so that if the platform respawns and our player is inside of it, the player uh, will get hurt. This will be hard to time, but that's okay. So in order to make sure that the player doesn't get stuck in the ground, we're going to create another empty game object as a child to our disappearing platform. And we're just going to rename this to stuck in ground. We're going to add a component box collider 2D. And then we're just going to add enemy controller is trigger and instant death. We're going to set our box collider to be inside of the box. And this way, if our, if the platform disappears and then we're inside of it and then it reappears, we will land right in here. Uh, it's really important though that we do not have access to it from outside of the platform. So we have to be very careful because it would not be good if uh, we died just by jumping on the platform. Which as you can see just happened. So what we're actually going to do just to make this a little bit easier is give it the exact same box collider components or size and offset as our other collider. So now it's the exact same size. So when we jump on top of it, it's not going to kill us anymore. However, because we set it the same size, we might be able to kill ourselves if we touch the side of it. Nope. It's very important that we test this really heavily too because we do not want a situation where that happens. But it seems to be good. So let's see if we can jump into the middle of it and see if it will make us despawn. Okay, so I've just spent five minutes trying to jump into this thing and I do not want to do it anymore. So what I'm going to do is click this ground right here. Drag it over here so that we can step on it. Grab the disappearing platform. Move it up. And now if we get lodged in the middle of it. Oh, that's not working at all. Okay, so let's see what's going on there. Oh, it looks like we messed up the Y values. I should have just copied the box collider from other collider to stuck in ground. Okay, maybe that'll work now. Okay, so now when we're touching the side of it, we are getting hurt. What about the top? So the top's good. Okay. So now we're just going to take the sides and push them in a little bit. Let's try that. Okay, now as soon as it lands on top of us, we despawn. Great, so hopefully there's no bugs with that. There shouldn't be now. 